Hey y'all, Joseph McBrayer here, glad you're joining in. Uh, today I'm gonna to talk about how you can film yourself. Thanks for watching this video and being a part of this channel, uh, where I hope to show some of the behind the scenes of how we do stuff here at Oak Grove Methodist Church, uh, but also how I do things as a pastor who also does a lot of filming and some church cinematography. So if you wanna like this video and subscribe to the channel, I'll be doing some of this most every week, uh, where I explain a little bit behind the scenes or maybe some of the hows and whys of what we do when we're filming people and doing work in churches like this. So without any further ado, let's go. Well, the first things first is we gotta decide where we're gonna shoot. And so today we're framing up as we normally do with the chancel rail in the back. Uh, we use a two camera setup here at Oak Grove, but uh, some people prefer to use a one camera setup or you just have your phone and that's all you're shooting with. This will work for that too. So I'll start with a one camera setup, but let's, let's decide where we wanna frame this up so that it looks the best it can, all right? So imagine you've got a tripod and uh, you're working with the tripod however you can. And what you wanna do is frame it up so that uh, people can see some of the emotional content on your face. This is much too far away. And uh, this is probably way too close. But if you get somewhere in between, depending on the length of your lens, uh, and it helps blur out some of the background. Now, now you've got it framed, let's put some lights on. So now that you've got the lights on, uh, you've got the way you want things, make sure and light those candles because that's important for all the focusing of things. You wanna frame up your shot. And so one of the things that I do often is to, uh, if you've got a zoom lens, you can use it or you can simply move, move your camera closer, uh, even if it's your iPhone. And so some people want to be straight on center in the camera. Some people prefer to be to one side because I'm trying to show this object behind me or this thing. But you wanna think thoughtfully about what's in the background and why. Uh, if you're a church person like me and you're doing a sermon in the space where people normally worship but aren't, this may be a very helpful thing for them to feel that sense of place and belonging. Uh, we know that the church is not just the steeple but the people uh, that make up the body of Christ, the church, but uh, the physical sense of place often has a great deal of helping people understand what belonging is. And so that's something to consider as well. But if you're doing an illustration with a baptismal font, then maybe you want to have the baptismal font in the shot. So one thing you can do is you can use a teleprompting app on your phone and record just like that the whole time on a tripod. But if you're doing that, why not break it up into maybe three different shots? Let's say for one shot, you've got one camera and you're wanting to have just a general sense of, hey y'all, glad to do this thing, here's the content. But let's say you wanted to punch in for a little bit of dramatic effect so people could see and you say, hey, we're so glad you're here, that's awesome, great. But let me tell you something. I really do think that you need to pay attention to this because it's really important. And so I'm getting closer so you have a deeper sense of my emotional capacity in my face. And then you can pop back out and you get that same sense back out to where you were. Uh, maybe even decide to do it not in the pulpit because the pulpit might be too high up, too bad of an angle for the person who's viewing you. Um, that's one of the greatest things about filming with cameras is you can get the audience close to you so they have a sense of who you are, a sense of your facial characters, your emotive state, uh, and how that communicates much more than just simply your words and your diction and the inflection of your voice. So whatever your background is, you wanna be sure and choose a background that's not distracting. So again, being someone who's doing a sermon or a talk or offering a prayer or a liturgy or a welcome to church, there's a church space behind me but you might wanna do it some different way. Uh, maybe you're trying to address the congregation and have a sense of what they're going through. So maybe you wanna grab the camera and then you actually want to go over into the pews so that people have a sense of maybe this is how you as the people in the pews, parishioners, lay people, might view what's happening up there. It also gives you some different background, different framing. Uh, some people like the straight on shot where you're straight in it. Some people prefer to be off to one side. Now, there's this thing called the rule of thirds. And so imagine you drew a line vertically, two lines to divide into one, two, three. And then you drew two lines horizontally to make thirds this way. That's called the rule of thirds. And often you want the subject's eyes to be on that top line. So whether I'm in the center or if I'm over on this side where you've got me in the rule of thirds looking this way, that works too. So that's one of the ways you can do that with rule of thirds. 
So however you're gonna frame your shot, uh, whether it's in that rule of thirds part of things, like a head and shoulders like this, so you can see my hands. As someone who talks with my hands, this is important. Uh, we often do that for our pastors. We sort of have a, a waist up shot so you can see what they're doing, what they're saying. Uh, but then also sometimes you want that closer in shot that does communicate differently when someone is talking and they're looking straight at you and you have this deep sense of connection with eye contact with the subject and the person saying the thing. So when you are filming with just a single camera, one of the most important things to do, and you see YouTubers do this all the time, is what they call a jump cut. So if I'm reading the teleprompter or giving my sermon and I mess up, oh man, I messed up, I stumbled over that word. All you have to do is simply crop in a little bit and now I can start right back. So to use a jump cut, you simply wait till the end of a paragraph and you jump in. See what I did there? And then you pull right back out. And then there you go. That's a jump cut. It's easy to do with a single camera. Another quick note about miking people. Uh, I'm using a lav mic and it's taped to my chest. Uh, there's also a mic up above the camera just in case. But in case you don't have these things, you can use your cell phone. You can do whatever. As long as the subject is close enough and speaking loudly and clearly, you should get decent audio. But odds are you know the better and worse spaces in your sanctuary or wherever you're filming from. Even in your house, uh, some quieter spaces, but also some spaces with bad reverb. So when you're using a two camera setup, you can often use visual appeal to have this sort of shot and then this shot, although we typically don't look on camera, but you can, and then back to this shot to go on. I use the teleprompter for probably 90% of the things I do because it's super helpful to make sure I have direct eye contact with you. I'm not looking at the screen here or the screen down there or the piece of paper there, but right at the viewer because it helps build that emotional connection. Uh, as a spiritual leader, someone talking, you get that connection with people right away. So teleprompter helps because it puts that right in front of you so you can look straight into the camera, straight into your audience who is doing that. So that's all for today. I hope that's been helpful to think about how we frame shots here at Oak Grove, a little behind the scenes for you all uh, who are church members and other people. Uh, but I do hope it's been helpful to think about and sort of see how we do things in church world. Um, this can work for any sort of setting, uh, anywhere you are. There's better and worse setups you can do, uh, but I hope that's been helpful just to see a little bit of how we do things here at Oak Grove. So again, I'm Joseph. Uh, thanks for tuning in here uh, for church members and for pastors and friends. Uh, if you want more interesting things like this, you can subscribe and like this video and share it with people who might need to see to get some different ideas how they frame their shots and how they work through things. So again, Joseph McBrayer, see you later. Peace.